All right, welcome you back, dear viewers. And this time round, you're going to look at first order type of reactions. Last time we looked at zero order. So now we want to look at the integrated rate loads. We want to look at how we can come up with a graph and how we can use that graph to really uh, calculate some other variables. Now, uh, this is the first order. reaction. So we first uh, need to know what first order reaction is. And uh, for this case, as we summarized last time, we say that an order of the reaction is the power to which concentration terms of the reactants are raised, okay? Uh, now, for this case, we are going to see that uh, when we say first order reaction, is that type of reaction in which the rate of reaction is proportional to the concentration of the reactant raised to the power one. So in this case, we are basically looking at power one. We're looking at power one, all right? So we need to know that uh, the rate of reaction is proportional to the first power of the concentration of the reactants. So the, the most important thing one should know about this reaction is that for this case, rate of reaction is proportional okay, at the concentration of reactants, okay, raise it to power one. Now, for this particular case, uh, we need to know that if we consider a certain reaction, I'll consider a reaction of A, forming products. So if I consider such a reaction, we are going to realize that the rate, remember the rate we say that is equals to K times the concentration of the reactants raised to the power one, since we are looking at a first order, it means that the power is one. And for this case, we need to know that uh, K there is equal to rate of uh, concentration of the reactant. Right, so let's look at the integrated form of rate equation. It is this integrated form that gives us the nature of the graph. And then we can use that to determine the rate constant. We can use that graph to determine the half-life, most of the other things. So now, uh, we need to know that, as we have already said, rate of reaction is equals to negative d, concentration of A, dt. We say that we make it negative because the reactants are reducing. And this is equals to k times concentration of A, because from here we know if it is first order, the rate of reaction is K times the concentration of A. So then you bring this general idea of rate is equal to negative dA dt, and then you equate. So you're going to equate this and this, and then we integrate. So negative D concentration of A over dt is equals to K concentration of A. So here we shall have negative D if we separate variables. is equals to if we separate variables, so we shall have over concentration of A is equals to K dt. So we are going to integrate this 
uh, from A, from A naught up to A at time T, then we shall also uh, integrate this side from when time is zero up to when time is T. So now what we do here, we shall do, we shall say the integral of concentration of A raised to power zero up to concentration of A raised to T of negative D concentration of A out of concentration of A. Don't cancel this. And this is equals to K integral from zero up to dt. Now, when you look at this integral, when you integrate this, you get negative lean A, negative lean concentration of A. So allow me to say that this one leads us to negative lean concentration of A. The limits from a naught concentration of A at time is equal to zero up to concentration of A at time T. This is supposed to be equal to KT. When you integrate this side, you get KT from zero up to time T, uh, but everything we are looking at T. So we shall be substituting T. Now, uh, this is going to be equal to when you're substituting here, it is going to be negative lean a naught no 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 first begin by substituting in tie at time t so lean a at time t all right minus lean a naught that is equals to k into t minus zero you substitute the limits for the value of t Substitute the limits for the value of A. So now this one will lead us to get uh, lean A naught minus lean A T. Why? Because a negative multiplied inside. And after it multiplying inside, it brought us to this one being positive and this one being negative. So this is equals to KT. Okay, and uh, we know this equation one can one can rewrite it. One can say lean because lean is the natural logarithm and therefore it follows the rules of logarithms. So when you have lean A naught minus lean A T, this is can this can be the same as lean. Then you say concentration of A not out of concentration of A at time T, and this is equal to K T. Which equation can be rewritten? One can write this equation as 2.303 logarithm to be still of course of Natural log of the density with 2.303 log of concentration of A naught over concentration of A at time t, and this is equals to kt. All right, so I'm going to use this information to determine the half life. I'm going to use the format of getting half life. Now for half-life, we shall be integrating from when the limits are from when time is zero and when t at t are half. Okay, so now we shall not move up to time t, but at t a half. And there it becomes very, very easier. It becomes very easier for us to do. Uh, what we are going to do, this is the expression that we can have for, for the integrated rate equation. Uh, now, if we are to determine half-life 
from a point where we have, where we separated variables for the other side. Let me say apply first order reaction. So uh, at that point where we separated the variables, negative D, concentration of A out of concentration of A is equals to KDT. At this point, we shall integrate from when A is zero, from concentration A is equals to zero, so we shall do integral from A zero, but at half life, the concentration of A will have reduced by two. The concentration of, of original will have reduced by, by, by half. And therefore, it's still negative DA out of A. And this one is going to be equal to k integral from zero up to half life, t half of dt. So this is what we are having. This is what we are having. So when you look at all this, when you look at all this, when you integrate this, you're going to get lean. All right, we're going to get lean concentration of A, but with the negative, and we are moving from limits A naught up to when the concentration of original reduced by, by a half. So this is equals to K. Then we bring in time from when time is zero up to half life, that's what we have. So when you substitute here, we are going to have negative lean A naught over two minus, because this negative is outside, so minus lean A naught, we first substitute the upper limit as the concentration of A, and then we substitute the lower limit as also concentration of A. And this is equal to K, we substitute T a half for T, and then we subtract from we substitute the lower limit, which is zero. So here, this is too much mathematical, but uh, we need the uh, fine expressions and then how to treat them to determine uh, how to treat them and use graphical technique to come up with uh, the answer. Now, looking at all this, we are going to have lean. Of course, I'm ne our negative on my plane side, so we shall have lean A naught minus lean A naught over two, I've multiplied out throughout a negative. This equals to K T half. Because T half minus zero is T half times K that is K T half. So looking at this, a lean can be factorized. And then mathematically, if you obey the laws of logarithms, so it will be A naught divided by A naught over two. This is equals to KT up. So A naught and A naught will cancel, so we shall have lean two. Remember what happens here? It is like A naught divided by A naught over two. It's the same as A naught times two over A naught. So this one is cancel, remain with the two. So that's why I'm saying lean two is equals to k t a half. And you know that lean two is the same as 0 
which is equals to k tr. So yeah, we can get our tr as 0 0.693 out of k. So there we have got our half-life. And remember, we already have the integrated rate equation. Okay, so having this in our minds, having this in our minds, we are going to look at uh, the examples. No, 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 we are going to look at the, ex the graphical, the graphical layout of this, I'm going to look at the graphical layout of this order of reaction. Now, uh, these expressions are worth being, are worth noting. And then we shall have a simple summary. The simple summary is that the differential rate equation, we have differential rate equation, For this order of reaction, then we have integrated rate equation. Then we have half life. Now, the differential rate equation for this, we say that it is negative d a out of dt. This was equal to k. A. Remember the difference of this, the difference between this and the zero order is that for zero order, we didn't have the concentration of A. Since the concentration terms are raised to our zero, it goes. So we, for the zero order, we have just K this side. And on integrating, when we integrated this, we got several expressions, and among which, great lean, we had the lean A naught out of AT. This is equal to KT. And we said that this one also can be written as 2.303 log A naught AT which is equals to KT. That is what we have. Then we say that half-life T a half is the same as 0 0.693 out of K. So these expressions, the moment we know them, then here we can easily uh, look at uh, the graphical approach. Now the first graph, the first graph can be, um, even from here, we say that the rate, though not differential, but you can note it, the rate of the first order is K times the concentration of the reactant. So now looking at all these instances, we can easily bring out a graphical. For example, if you, the first graph, we can get it from rate is equals to K times A. When you find that they have given you the rate and then the concentration of a certain reactant, when they want you to plot the two, we shall take our rate as the Y axis is equals to, our K is the gradient and our A is X, we don't have intercept. So it is in form y is equals to mx plus c, whereby m corresponds to k and x corresponds to concentration of a. Therefore, you can plot rate against concentrations of a. And when you plot these values, it is going to produce a straight line. So here you produce a straight line when you plot a graph of rate. When you Plot a graph of rate against concentration, 
if you plot a graph of rate of reaction against concentration, you're going to find yourself having such The moment you plot a graph of rate of reaction, of course, the rate is in moles per decimeter cubed per second, then against concentration of the reactants, which is in moles per decimeter cubed. Now, when you plot such a graph, you produce a straight line through the whole through the origin. So this is a clear indicator that this is first order reaction, whereby the rate of reaction is directly proportional to the concentration. So the graph of rate of reaction against concentration of the reactant produces a straight line from the origin, and therefore the slope will always give us the rate constant. Slope gives us the rate constant, meaning that you can, after getting the rate constant, you can determine the half-life because half-life is 0 0.693 out of K, which K can be obtained from the graph. Very interesting, very interesting which is we are going to look at it in details and then we see what can be done. So now um, that is the first graph that we can produce. Another graph that can be produced here is by comparing, uh, is by comparing another equation, is by looking at another equation. Um, when we look at this equation here, where we have 2.303 log concentration of A naught out of concentration of A at time T is equals to KT. When you look at that, you can work on this equation so that it helps us get another type of graph. Actually, we can get different graphs in this. Um, and the first graph, we are going to look at a point where you're having a logarithm. If we make logarithm the subject to be logarithm, A not out of A at time t, this is equals to kt divided by 2.303. I'm trying to derive another equation that we hope may get other types of graphs. And therefore, here it is going to be, um, you know, when we are dividing, we can subtract. So it is going to be logarithm concentration of A naught minus logarithm concentration of A at time T. This is going to be equal to K over 2.303, then times time. Looking at this equation, looking at this equation, we can make log, we can make logarithm of concentration of A at time T, the subject of the equation, and this is going to be equal to, if we bring it to this side, then we shall bring this on this side. So it is going to be, is going to be equal to negative k out of 2.303 t, then plus logarithm. Okay, logarithm to be strain of a not. What, what have I done? I have brought logarithm to the stand of at this side, then I've brought k this side. So when you compare this, this one, we shall make it our y-axis. Then uh, this one is going to be our gradient, negative k out of 2.303, so is our m. On the x-axis, we shall be plotting their time. And this value log A naught will always give us the 
in intercept. Meaning we shall plot a graph of log A at time T against time. We shall produce, because you see negative gradient, K is going to be negative. And then at the same time, we can be easily, it can be easy for us to determine the intercept. Now, when you plot this graph here, we plot this graph for you here. When you plot this graph, we shall plot a graph of log concentration of A at time T against time. Time is in seconds. Logarithm has got no units. The logarithm of the value has got no units, so we leave it like that. Now, this graph will produce, the moment you plot log A, log A T, Again, this time, and you produce a straight line with negative gradient, you can easily conclude that that is first order reaction. And then what do you do? So we say that uh, we say that the, the slope is equals to negative k out of 2.303 from the expression. Then we say that t is x. Then we say that at this point, the intercept, at y intercept, we are having, at y intercept, we are having our logarithm of a naught. So here we can easily determine the initial concentration. If you have the, the a naught value, you can easily, if you have the logarithm. So in other words, the value that you take from here is the whole of this logarithm of a naught. Not a naught, it is logarithm of a naught. Meaning that, let me conclude it from here. After having created this graph, you can easily conclude that having, that since the graph is, uh, um, is a straight line with a negative gradient and intercept log a, on the log a naught on the log a t axis. Therefore, it is first on the type of reaction. We are going to look at illustrative examples and maybe we see how we can deduce. Now, you can, if you want the original concentration, I'm going to let it, I'm going to say maybe log a naught is equals to w. So if log a naught is equals to w, Remember log a naught is the, uh, is the intercept. So after taking this value, if we call it W, we can easily get a naught itself. Then our a naught here is going to be equal to 10 or W. Why? Mathematically, in other words, the value which you get here, let me assume that it is 10, concentration of n will be 10 power 10. Uh, reminder, if you have a logarithm to base 10 of a may be equals to b, you need to know that to get the value of a, this, this number here is an index, so it's a power, and this is a base. So it will be the base times the power b. The moment that I've not indicated the logarithm log, uh, base 10, it is automatic. It is automatically taken as base 10. So we have to remember from that. And from there, we can easily determine the half line. This, this value here, the slope value that you will get will be equal to negative k over 2.303. And therefore, you can easily get your value of k. If the value of the slope is something equated to this, make k the subject and get the value of k. After getting the value of k, you can easily get your half life from there. So that is the first version, actually the second version of second order type of reactions. Another version, another version is still the same, but where you can get uh, this, it is still the same, it's still the same, but you can get, even you can have it in terms of lean. Also, you can have it in, 
you can have it when the values are from negative. Let me show you another type of graph that you can plot. You can also have an alternative graph as you plot still the same quantities. If you put the same quantities, you're going to have that time. You can, you can come up with the values which when you're given negative values to plot. So we had plotted uh, log A concentration of at time t, sorry, log concentration of at time t. When you plot this graph still, you find yourself having something like that. And at this point still, this is our logarithm, concentration at time is zero. And still the slope is going to be the same and you can determine all other things the same way. Negative k, So still you can get the same values. Alternatively, alternatively from the other point where we had, you can, you can, you can have a plot of another graph from the point where we have logarithm, okay? Uh, a not out of a t is equals to k over three over two point three zero three t. If you if you're given data varies and maybe they want you to get the ratio of logarithm of concentration of initial concentration out of concentration at time t, and then you plot. The moment you're given such information, doing that the whole of this is y, the whole of this is m, the whole of this is x, and the intercept is zero. So for this case also, you are going to produce, because for this particular case, you're going to plot the whole logarithm, concentration of a naught out of concentration of a t, and we're going to plot it against time, which time is in seconds. This one here will produce a straight line with a positive gradient, which positive gradient is k over 2.303. So we shall have our, our slope here as k over 2.303, but it will be from the origin. So the moment you plot such a graph and you get it like this, then we can also deduce that this is first order type of reaction. Uh, from here, since you can get the value of K, you can substitute in the half-life equation to determine the half life. Alternatively, alternatively, you can still, uh, you can still plot, let me see, you can still plot uh, where, uh, where, where you have blame, Concentration of A naught out of concentration of A T is equals to K T. Still, it's the same way. It will be in A naught minus in A T equals to K T. So, looking at all this, you can plot, you can rewrite, you can rewrite it so that you have lean 80. I'm making lean 80 the subject. I can bring it to this side and then I bring this from this side. So it will be is equals to negative KT plus lean N naught. So for this case, this is my Y is equals to my negative slope is M. Then here is my x plus c. So this is a, a straight line, of course, and you can have it as uh, this is your protein green 80 against time in seconds. Lean 80 has got no units. So since the negative, since k is negative, the moment you're given a lean to plot values of lean concentration at time t against time, just you know, 
if you produce a negative straight line, rather straight line with a negative gradient, at this point of the intercept, we say that it is lean. And that intercept is giving us lean A naught. It gives us lean A naught. All right. So here you can see that slope is equals to negative K from what we have here. So slope is equals to negative K. And looking at this value, you can determine the slope. And after determining the slope, you can easily get the value of half-life. Further, you can determine the original concentration here. How? By looking at this, if we say that lean A naught, because the value you're going to read here corresponds to lean A naught. So if that value maybe is X, all right? Still, you can get the original concentration by taking the ant log. So you have your 10 power x. So still, you can, can reach there. Alternatively, alternatively, still, you can draw a graph, which is in this format. And still, it is going to give you the same values. So it will always depend on the values. If you have some negative values, then it will always take that from it. So still by coming up with this graph, we say that you have plotted, uh, have plotted a first order reaction graph. So um, let me derive the rate equation for the second order. Uh, but before I go to the second order still, if I go to the second order, uh, still you can plot, you can be given information and maybe you plot. And on plotting, you find yourself, uh, maybe you plot concentration. However, you write full words, plot concentration in moles per decimeter cubed against time. So if you plot, maybe you find you have gotten a curve. Uh, of course, at this point, we have our original concentration, A naught. And by having original concentration, you can get half-life. So, uh, this point you have got an half life, then you can get another half life. And these values will always be re reduced according to the original value. Now, at half life, this is A naught over two, of course. And at another half life, this is A naught over four. So we can see that maybe. This one has given us, if this is the first time, and maybe this is the second time, G2. So we can look at the graph being a curve with a negative gradient and the slope of the curve at a given point will always give us the rate of reaction, which slope can be obtained by drawing a tangent. Okay, we can draw a tangent and then determine the gradient of the tangent. And for this case, when you're getting the half life, you can directly get it from the graph and it can be used to find a constant. So here, you can easily get the rate constant from half life, all right? And uh, half life is simply obtained by getting that thing that corresponds to A naught, to A naught over two, sorry. Because at half life, the concentration has reduced to half. So by half, sorry. Now here, it is going to be the first half life. So one, by determining the value here, one can get the value of half life. Maybe here is another value of half life. But um, the first, the value, uh, we can get these two values and then we take the average to be more accurate. Okay, to be more accurate, whereby, uh, to get the half-life here will be equal to T1 plus T2 out of 2 
but T1 is written by, if here we have began with zero, T1 is written by T minus zero, which is T. And then this one is written by T1 minus T. So to get T2, we shall get T1, T, T prime minus T. We are going to look at the illustrative example. So after having gotten this, you, we are very safe. So for the second order type of equation, if you look at second order, before I go to second order, I need to first tell you the examples of reactions that undergo first order reaction. And those among which uh, include all radioactive decays, all radioactive decays undergo first order reaction. Two, when we have the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide to form oxygen and water, that is also another live example of first order, uh, we have uh, the um, hydrolysis of sucrose. When sucrose is undergoing hydrolysis, that question is uh, common. That question is very common. When hydrolysis, when the sucrose is undergoing hydrolysis uh, in, four, uh, in presence of the acid. Then another, we have acid uh, catalyzed hydrolysis of an ester. When ester, when ester has hydrolyzed, okay, we know that we form ethan and a carboxylic acid. So also that one is a first order. Uh, we have the decomposition of nitrogen pentaoxide. The conversion of nitrogen pentoxide, that reaction produces nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. Then we have also the decomposition of the benzene diazonium chloride. The, when that benzene diazonium chloride is also decomposing, uh, that is a that is a, a diazonium salt. So when it is decomposing, still it takes on first order reaction. Then we also have the reaction of uh, two chlorometer propane with sodium hydroxide. Still, that is uh, two chlor two chlor two meter propane. When it is the when it is uh, reacting with sodium hydroxide, it also takes the first order type of reaction. So uh, there are very many, but those are the cited ones which are common that we can take on. All right. So I said already active decays, the combustion of hydrogen peroxide. Uh, we say the uh, hydrolysis of sucrose in terms of an acid. We say it doesn't catalyze the hydrolysis of an ester. We say the composition of nitrogen pentoxide, the composition of benzene diazonium salts. We, look, we say that uh, there is a reaction of two chloro two methyl propane with sodium hydroxide, ETC. So all those reactions uh, take the second, the first order. Now, for the case of second order, when we say second order reactions, uh, this is something very, very, very interesting. This is something very, very interesting also. So when we say second order, uh, here you need to know that the rate of reaction is proportional to the products of the concentration of the reactants, each raised to the second power. No, 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 each raised to power one. But we are looking at we are looking at a case where, where we have a reaction like 2A going to products. Let me derive my statements from this. So if 2A is equals to products, then it means that the rate is equals to K times concentration of A, but raise it to power two. Alternatively, if you have like A plus B giving you products, you can easily see that the rate of reaction is equals to K times concentration of A and concentration of B. Looking at all this, uh, we can generalize now that a second order reaction is that reaction in which the rate of reaction is proportional 
to the product, or rather is proportional to the concentration of the reactant, which reactant is this, raised to the power two. Alternatively, rate of reaction is directly proportional or is proportional to the product of the concentration of two reactants, each raised to power one. Because if this one is raised to power one and this one to power one, the overall power will be two, which will make it second order. So that is what we need to know. Then other things we are going to integrate through. And we say we get the integrated rate equation and then how we get the half line. So let's begin with the integrated rate equation. When you look at the integrated rate equation, uh, we are going to know that from rate, is equals to K S squared. And also we know that the differentiated rate is negative D A DT. So you can equate the two since they are all rates. So it means that uh, our negative D concentration of A out of DT is equals to K then A squared. So if you separate the variables, it is going to be negative dA out of concentration of A squared. This is equals to K dt. So when you integrate both sides, but taking into consideration of the initial concentration, A not up to A at time t, negative, D concentration of A out of concentration of A squared, this is going to be equal to K integral from zero up to time T of DT. Now, looking at this, when you integrate this, you can move the A squared up, all right? So that it becomes negative integral from A at time zero up to A at time T, then uh, we shall have a power negative two for either integrating then d dA. So this is going to be equal to k zero up to time t dt. When you integrate a power negative two, remember, we increase the power by one, we divide by the new power. So it is going to be negative. When you increase the power by one here, it is going to be a power negative one, concentration of A power negative one out of the new power, which is negative one, you increase the power by one and you reduce, rather you divide by the new power. That is the rule of integration. Increase the power by one, divide by the new power you've gotten. So when you increase the power by one, it will be negative two plus one, which is negative one, then we divide by that new power, which is negative one. And this is going to be from original concentration, up to concentration at time t is going to be equal to k times t from zero up to time t. Now, this negative will cancel with this so that uh, we have one over a to be one over a, right? This will be automatically one over a from A naught up to A T, and it's going to be K, we shall substitute anyway, yeah, we shall substitute, let me first make it, leave it as T from zero to T. Then now you can substitute, we shall put in the first limit will be one over A T minus one over, we substitute A naught, you substitute these limits on this value of A, but you have to subtract when you're putting the lower limit. So this is the same as K into T, small t, minus zero. So looking at all this, you're going to have your final expression, okay? We are going to have uh, our final expression with this case, and uh, 
our final expression is going to be one over a t is equals to k t plus one over a naught. It has come this side as a plus, and here is t minus zero, which is t, so this side is k t, but you're adding one over a naught. So here, you can easily plot a graph. You can easily plot a graph because this will be your y, gradient will be your k, at time we shall call it our x, then this will be your intercept when it comes to graphical. <laughs> now with the half-life, there is no big difference, only that we change the limits. Uh, when you to get its half-life, it just changes a little bit. And we just, all the others are the same, but I want us to change on the limits only. So now for the case of the limits, uh, for the case of the limits, it is a matter of uh, changing here. So allow me to start from here. The limits now are not up to 80. No. So the limits would be A not, and at half life, the limit, the, the concentration will have reduced to half. Then we shall also have at time t up to t a half. So that when you're substituting here, uh, you don't want to spend too much time. Uh, it will be one of a concentration of A from original concentration up to when that original has reduced to half is equal to k times t from when time is equal to zero up to when time is half life up to t a half so here you can uh, you can easily substitute so we shall have one over instead of a we are going to put in the upper limit which will be a naught over two minus one over a naught and this is supposed to be equaling to uh, kt half because you will put you will put uh, t a half then minus zero which is kt half so looking at all this we are going to have uh, when you work on this, it is one over a naught over two. So it is going to end up, because when you take the reciprocal, it will be two over a naught minus one over a naught is equals to KTF. So you can really see that. Uh, here it can reduce two minus one it will be one over a naught. All right, this will be because it's like since they have the same denominators, so you can subtract them directly two minus one. So we shall have one over a naught equaling it to KTR. So here, you can easily get your t a half. You are going to find that, let me conclude it from here. When you cross multiply, you're going to have your t a half for that case. As you shall, you, we are dividing by k, so it will be one over k concentration of a at time is equal to zero, k a naught. That is what we are having as our half life. So from this case, you can plot the graphs to show what we have done. And then we see, how do we plot? We need to first have a summary that negative dA over dt is equals to k, a squared, this is the differentiate, 
the differential. Then the integrated rate. We got one over A at time T is equals to KT plus one over A naught. Then we've got in our half-life as T a half also is equals to one over K a naught. Then we have our general equation where we have that rate is equals to K a squared. Now you, you, we are going to plot I went to plot graphs based on this information and we see. So the first case of the graph is plotted from this case where you plot rate as y on y axis is equals to m x. So you are on your rate of reaction will be put on y axis. Your gradient will be the value of k. And then on the x axis, we shall plot a square. So they can first tell you, they tell you to plot a graph of a rate of reaction against the square of the concentration. So it means that in, if the question is not having it squared, you need to first square it if they tell you to plot a square. So I'm going to say if you plot a graph of rate of reaction against concentration, but this concentration is squared, we're going to obtain You're going to obtain a straight line, but always not what you're plotting. So this is a squared meaning the units are going to be moles square, the decimeter power negative six. So the moment they say plot the rate of reaction, rate of reaction in moles per decimeter per second, when you plot the rate, Against S against the square of concentration, and you get a straight line, simply know that that is second order. Of course, you will have already seen it, but by, by me, I think against a square, when they have given you a reaction like A going to product, so two A going to product, rather two A going to products, or A plus B going to product, simply know that that is the second order type of reaction. All right. Uh, now, another graph. Another graph, of course, by getting K, after getting K, you can easily get your, uh, you can easily get your, you can easily get your half line. Then another graph, another graph is when you brought a graph of rate of reaction against Concentration just so when you plot against concentration just like A, you can't get this form of a graph, but instead you're going to get a curve that passes through the origin. So it will appear like this. So it will be like that. It's a rare case though, but anything can be possible. So this is a rate of reaction. And here is concentration of A. So moles per decimeter cube, units without units, then it is not a graph, moles per decimeter cube. Then the other units is moles per decimeter cube. That's okay. Okay. Now, from here, we can have another graph, another form of the graph, actually, which seems to be common, 
Now, with this information of the integrated rate law, or rather rate equation, here we can come up with a graph. Whereby we are going to have this one as our y axis on our y axis, y is equals to it takes the form of uh, uh, it takes the form of uh, takes the form of uh, a straight line. So we shall have. shall have this one as our y-axis on our y-axis, one over a t, it will be on our y-axis. Then this k will be our gradient, and this t, we shall put it on the x-axis, plus this one, the value that we shall get here will be our intercept. So it means that on our x-axis, we have time. So we have a graph of one over a at time t, against time. So when you plot one over A at time T against time, your graph will take this shape. So we have one over concentration of A at time T. And here the units now, since it is one of a concentration, so it will be per mole. It can't be moles now, it will be per mole, then the centimeter should be. Then time, of course, in seconds. Now for this graph, it is going to have an intercept. So you will have it drawn from somewhere, depending on the values given. And it is at this point where we have the intercept one over A naught. So here, the value we pick here is one over concentration of A naught, meaning that if this value is known, if you have picked this value, then you can get A naught. So the very value here is equals to one over A naught. And here, the moment you determine the slope, you have gotten the rate constant. So with that, you can easily substitute here and you get your half-life. But don't forget that the value of A naught is not directly picked from the graph. So if at this point, maybe you have X, doing that one over A naught is equals to X, which X is the determined value from the graph, then here you can get your, uh, you can get your value of concentration of A naught as one divided by X. So that one will always give you the, so one of the value you get here gives you the initial concentration. The slope gives you the value of K, and then you substitute here, you get the half-life. Very good. So we are going to look at illustrative examples where we use uh, graphs to determine half-life, to determine other parameters. And then from that point, from that point, we are going to look at another method of determining uh, of determining the half lives, uh, no, 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 of, the, of calculating the rate of reactions and the rate constants, which is the initial rate. Then from there, we shall look at the factors that affect the rate of reaction and some experiment, then we call it a topic. So let's look at the graphical part of it and we see. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel members. Thank you.